Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn math. Today is our next lesson number 14. Today we'll discuss the concept of linear equations, how to solve linear equations. What we're going to deal with today, today being our first encounter with these things, what we're going to encounter today are very simple linear equations. Let's begin. First thing first, what do we mean by a linear equation? Do you know what that means? Linear equation means that the unknown that you see, for example, here is the first one, x plus 3 equals 7. Now that is a linear equation. That is a linear equation. It's linear because what is, the, what is x being raised to? x here is being raised to the first power, even though the power does not appear there, but that's what it is. x, when it's to c, it is x to the first power. For example here, when I write 5, what, what's the exponent of this 5? Even though it does not appear there, but it is 5 raised to 1. And the reason we don't like, the reason we don't write it is because it's not necessary, it serves no purpose, it's still 5. On the other hand, if it were x 5 raised to 2, <coughs> If the quantity that we were dealing with was 5 raised to 2, then we would have had no choice but to actually write down 2, because otherwise we wouldn't know that it's 25. 5 raised to 2 is same as 5 times 5, and that is 25. So in this case, we have to put down the exponents. But if it's just the first power, we don't have to write down the exponent. 5 is just 5, which is same as 5 raised to 1. So here, when we say x, x is same as x raised to 1, except we don't have to put down the exponent here. It's like this. It's called linear equation because the exponents that we deal with is of the first degree. That's how we say it. It is called linear because, because the exponent that we deal with, that we deal with the unknown quantity, unknown quantity is of the first degree. This is how your algebra book will express the notion. This is how your algebra teacher will express the notion. Why would they express it this way? Oh, because that is the nerdy way. That is the geeky way. The nerdy way, the geeky way, the classical way, the traditional way, the academic way is to express your idea like this. But all we are saying here is that, is that by first degree, all we mean is that it is not, it is x raised to 1 plus 3 equals 7 and not x raised to 2. Had it been x raised to 2 equals to 9, now that equation, this equation is no longer linear. It is not linear because, because this equation is not of the first degree. First degree means this, the power has to be 1. That is, this equation is of the second degree because this x squared. On the other hand, if I tell you that a raised to 25 equals 7, this equation is of 25th degree. 25th degree, you get the idea. A linear equation is linear because the exponents that one encounters are of the first degree. No exponents, no, no variable rather, and no, and no variable in the equation that one encounters will have an exponent higher than 1. Do you understand? For example, this equation here, a plus b plus c equals 9, it is still of the first degree, because all the exponents are of the first degree. Do you understand? This is not third degree, it is first degree. Now, this equation, this is of second degree. a squared plus b plus c to the fourth, now this equation is of the fourth degree. Do you understand? Anyway, let's continue. So, here's our first problem. Question is, what's the value of x? The reason we call we designate these as simple linear equation, they are simple, they are so simple in fact that we could actually do it out by trial and error by simply asking ourselves what what number times three equals seven? The answer of course is four. Four four times three is going to equal seven, therefore x must be four. But how do we solve it algebraically? If you had to show the work, this is how we do it, it's very simple. Our job is to bring is to bring the unknown to one side by itself 
and everything else that you see along with the unknown to get rid of it as soon as possible, bring it to the other side. The question is, how do we bring the 3 to the other side? We subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. We subtract 3 for, from both sides of the equation. Now, an equation, what I want you to understand is that, an equation is like a seesaw. In the playground, when you were little, you, you must have encountered seesaw, you must have played with them. It is a balance. And as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, you're not disturbing the balance. It's still going to be balanced. So if I subtract 3 from right hand side of the equation, and if I go ahead and subtract 3 from the left hand side of the equation, the equation is still valid. The equation is the same exact equation as it was a few seconds ago, because I treated both sides in the same manner. We subtracted 3 from both sides. Right here. Subtract 3 from this side, subtract 3 from that side. If we subtract, what was the point of subtracting this 3? What's up? The point of subtracting 3 from this side is to get rid of this, this bloody 3. Now we have a positive 3 on this side and a negative 3, positive 3 and negative 3. How much is plus positive 3 and negative 3? It's a 0. They're going to kill each other. Bam, bam. What are we left for on this side? We are left with only x. On this side we are only left with x and we have equal sign. Equal sign just comes down. And here we have 7 minus 3, which is just 4, which is exactly what we found before. And of course we found that without doing all this mumbo jumbo, because it was so simple. But as we get along in the more complicated equations, as we get, as we get along, as we, as we go furthermore and we encounter more complicated scenarios, we will not be able to solve the value of x in our head. We'll have to have a procedure, we will have to have a system, we'll have to have a method. This is the method. The method is very straightforward. Bring all the known quantities to the right hand side, bring the, all the unknown quantities to the left hand side. That's just a convention. Oh, that, oh there we go again. I used that word, word again one more time. We used the word yesterday and I forgot to tell you when we learned that word. The word convention has two meanings, as you know. What convention has two meanings. One meaning of the convention is what everybody knows, which is a convention is a gathering. It's a meeting. It's a powwow, if you like. Do you understand? One goes to a convention. Second meaning of the word convention is a convention is a tradition. A tradition. Convention. Convention is a noun. Convention. Convention, which is a noun, which means tradition. Now, if you want to make an adjective out of it, we will insert a l to the end. And now it becomes conventional, which means traditional. An orthodox way, a classical way, a conventional way is to keep the unknown to the left hand side and the known quantities to the right hand side. Why in that manner? Why not the other way around? Well, there is no reason for it. It's just a convention. It's just a tradition. You understand? That's just what everybody does. It makes it easier if you follow the tradition, if you follow the norm. So that's it. Let's do one more. Enough of the talk. I, I talk too much. Number two. Equation number two. There's this next equation. Two plus p. Two plus p. Two plus p equals five. Now again, it's so simple that we can figure out immediately that p would have to be 3. p would have to be 3 because 2 plus 3 is 5. Let's do it out. 2 plus p equals 5. We want to get rid of this 2 from this side. This 2 has a positive sign in front of it. How do I know it has a positive sign in front of it? Because if there is no sign in front of it, that means it is positive. If I tell you, if I write down 7, then that 7 means it's a positive 7. Because had it been negative 7, I would have put a negative sign in front of it. So convention dictates that if the quantity is a positive quantity, you don't actually have to write down the positive if you don't want to. Do you understand? So this is positive 2, we want to get rid of it. Let's subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. If we subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, the positive 2 and the negative 2, they're going to kill each other. We're going to be left with p on this side, and p equals 5 minus 2, which is 3, which is exactly what we said. Let's do one more. Seven plus a equals twelve. Again, you can tell. We can very immediately uh, tell that seven plus what number equals twelve? Seven plus five equals twelve. And how are we going to find it? This is the method. Seven plus a equals twelve. This is a positive seven. We subtract seven from both sides of the equation. Seven drops out, and a equals twelve minus seven, which is five, so just like before. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Nine plus u, nine plus u equals twenty. Now, in case you're wondering why these variables keep changing, I do it on purpose. It is by design 
because in most algebra books they keep using x and they use the bloody hell out of the x and then soon the students begin to imagine that everything in algebra has to be x. Do you understand? It does not. It's just that it's just that these letters are these letters are used to represent an unknown quantity. Unknown quantity has been given a name. You can call that unknown quantity A, you can call it B, you can call it Z, you can call it T, you can call it U, you can call it M, you can call it whatever the hell you want it to call it. You can call it hippo, you can call it Micah, and then solve for it. Do you understand? It's just a it's just the name of the unknown quantity. Here we are calling the unknown quantity U. This is the 9. We want to get rid of this 9. It's a positive 9, so let's subtract 9 from both sides. 9 is going to drop out and U will be 20 minus 9, which is going to be 11, which of course we should have known right away that 9 plus 11, of course, is going to equal 20. It's very simple. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Do it yourself as soon as I as soon as I put it in the blackboard. M plus 7 equals 20. As we can tell, 13 plus 7 is going to be 20. We know the answer, but let's pretend we don't know it. Subtract 7 from both sides and that's all it is. Subtract 7 from both sides, 7 drops out and m equals 20 minus 7 which is 13 which we knew all along. Let's continue. Let's continue. y plus 5 equals 8. What number, what number plus 5 is going to equal 8? The answer is 3. We'll find out in a second. Subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. Don't just say subtract 5. I find it very annoying when the students, when you ask them what do they do and they will say I subtracted 5. That is not, that, that has no meaning. You have to spell it out. Subtract 5 from, from what? From both sides of the equation. Don't just say subtract 5 from the left hand side. You can't go around sitting subtracting 5 from one side of the equation and not the other. Subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. Equation, remain, equation must remain an equation. The equation must remain balanced. The only way it's going to remain balanced is that if you treat both sides of the equation at all times in the same manner. Whatever you do to the left hand side, the exact same thing, the exact same operation must be performed to the other side. That's how the mathematician will speak. Whatever you do to the one side, you must do to the other side the exact same thing. Instead of saying it like that, they would say, whatever operation you perform on one side, the same operation must be performed on the other side. And all of a sudden, it begins to, it begins to make you sound like a freak, like a geek, like a nerd. That's, that's the language of algebra. Do you understand? Don't get intimidated by it. Don't, buy, don't get annoyed by it. That's it. Just learn the lingo. So we perform the same operation. 5 drops out and y equals... 8 minus 5, which is 3. Let's do one more. W plus 10 equals 13. W plus 10 equals 13. Let's subtract 10 from both sides. Let's subtract 10 from both sides. 10 is going to drop out and W equals 3. K plus 4 equals 9. You see how simple it is? Subtract 4 from both sides and k will equal 9 minus 4 which is 5. Let's do one more. This is going to be the penultimate one. This is going to be the penultimate one. I do not know why I keep introducing these words. The one we are about to do is going to be the penultimate one. Penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. It means second to the last. When did we learn it? Penultimate at uh, day number eleven. Just type in, just type in vocabulary words. Just type in vocabulary words. Day eleven, or if you happen to be preparing for one of these tests, just type in, for example, GRE, GRE vocabulary words. Day eleven, and the video will pop right up, and you will learn the word penultimate. Convention is something that we learn on day number forty-six. Premeditate is something that we learn on day number thirty-three. Latitude it was, it was the word that I used in the last lecture, but we, I have not covered it in the, in the vocabulary video yet, which is why there is no, there is no number there. So it's a penultimate problem. Here is the problem. B plus 13 equals 23. So what number plus 13 equals 23? What number plus 13 equals 23? And of course that's a ridiculous question, isn't it? It's too simple a question. Hence, the simple equation. Simple linear equations. They are way too simple. They are beyond babyish. There is nothing in it. 
But if you want to show, if you wanted to show the work, if you wanted to show the procedure, the procedure is simple. So you subtract 13 from both sides of the equation. Just 13. Positive 13 kills the negative 13. And B is simply 23 minus 13, which is 10. And so now the ultimate one, the very last one, n minus 3 is equal to 12. One more time, this word is spelled P-E-N and then ultimate, but it's not pronounced pen ultimate, it's pronounced penultimate. Penultimate means second to the last. Let's add 3 to the both sides. Question here is, what number minus the 3 equals 12? And of course, that's very simple. 15 minus 3 would equal 12, and we'll find out in a second. The negative 3 and the positive 3, this time the negative is on the top, it's going to cancel out the positive 3, and we have to add 3 to this side. 12 plus 3 is 15, which is n, which is exactly what we said the n should be. 15 minus 3 equals 12. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.